I can go ahead and get started, Alex. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Sorry that my camera is not on. I was trying to plug it in from my computer and my phone so I can have an um, overhead view and also a frontal view. But that obviously was not working. So I can only get it in on my phone. So today we're making like um, a quick artisan bread. Normally, the artisan bread, it takes um, about 12, minimum 12 hours to let it rise. But today we're doing like a quick version of it since we only have an hour. Um, I already have some that's been sitting down for like, I would say 20 to 30 minutes now. Well, about 20 minutes. So in a couple more minutes, I'll be transitioning it into this, um, into my oven. Um, to get started with the artisan bread, you do not need a Dutch oven pot, which is this one. It's like a ceramic, um, it's very heavy and it can withstand heat up to about 400 degrees. So you don't need it, but then it's, it also adds to the crust of the bread and give it like a crispier taste. So to get started to prep, I'm going to line this um, Dutch oven pot with um, parchment paper, and then we'll get started on um, making the recipe. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna line it. Like right now at the moment, my oven is preheating at 450 degrees. So I'm gonna close the lid on it and I am going to put the Dutch oven pot in the oven for 30 minutes so we can um so it can get really nice and hot. Sorry. I'm gonna go put this in the oven and we can get started. We'll get started. It is a heavy pot, so. All right, so this recipe is fairly simple. Um, you'll need three cups of flour, three and one quarter cups of flour, which is one of these and um, and one of those, so three and um, a quarter cup. And just give me one minute. Can you guys still see my camera even if I do this? Um, your camera's off. Oh, okay, so I have to keep it on. Um, what about now, is that better? Yes. Okay, awesome. So you need three and a quarter cup of flour. So this recipe is very forgiving. So it's okay if you don't level the flour the exact way um, we were taught to level flour. Um, so it's very forgiving. Um, and for this recipe, I am using bread flour. Um, you could use all purpose flour or whatever you have in your kitchen. I'm using bread flour because it has more protein which then creates a fluffier texture in the bread. So I'm gonna add three cups of that. Then I'm gonna add in the quarter cup measurement of flour. Because we are doing the, um, the faster version to this, recipe, um, we have to add um, one teaspoon of sugar to it so that way it can rise faster because we don't have all day to wait for it. So we're adding one teaspoon of sugar. Granulated white sugar is okay this much in there. So that's one teaspoon and we can put this sugar away so it's not taking up space on the counter. And we're adding a complete packet of the um, active dry yeast um, or rapid dry yeast. Let me get my scissors to cut it open real quick. Um, so this is the one I bought from the supermarket. Um, rapid rice and say yeast. Um, 
try to get this open without getting yeast everywhere. These little packets are so hard to open. I always have a hard time with them. So we're using the entire packet. Oh, um, and there I made a dough earlier, so I had dough on my spoon. So that's what you're seeing. That's stuck on the spoon. So I get every single little bit of yeast that's in there. So now we're gonna measure out um, two teaspoon of like sea salt. I'm going to um, ground it on the other on the side, and I have two teaspoon of that. It depends on the amount of salt you want to add to it. It doesn't have to be two teaspoons, but I like the tastier bread, so I'm adding more. I'm two teaspoons to it. That should be, it might be a little less than two teaspoons. Yeah, it's a little bit under two teaspoons. So that's one teaspoon. Let me just grab a little bit more. We're gonna add that right there. Perfect. So that's two teaspoons. So in this bowl, we have the flour, um, we have we have the salt, we have the sugar, and we have the active dry yeast. Um, so and then we're gonna add warm water. You don't want to add cold water to this because you are um, you want the um, the process to go a lot faster. So adding cold water will slow down the yeast from developing, but when you add warm water, it makes it a little bit faster. Um, so I'm just gonna wait for my water to heat up a little bit. Cross this one out. I want it too hot. So to this dough, we're adding one and a, and a third cup of water. Just kind of mix it. I'm gonna add a third cup. Earlier while I was making the dough, I didn't notice that it was a little bit thick. So I did go ahead and add two additional um, tablespoons of water to it, but let's see. Can you guys see what I'm doing okay? Yep. All right, awesome. And that's literally all it takes to make bread. Not much. This is not the consistency we want the dough. So we're gonna keep mixing to activate it in the water. And I'm probably going to have to add about two or so tablespoon of water to this. Because it is a little bit thick. Let's see what that gives us. Bread is like one of the easiest but hardest things to make because it is so simple. And oftentimes people create fear around it, but literally all it takes to make bread is flour, salt, and water and yeast and sugar if you want for a little flavor. Do you guys see how the dough started to soften up? So that's what we need. Um, we want a consistency like this one, All right? Like it's a very sticky dough. We want a consistency like that one. So that one has been sitting for a while and it's been rising, which is great. My water on. Can add a little bit more water. Okay. 
the good thing about like this recipe, like I said earlier, it's very forgiving. Um, so you add a little bit more water, you add a little bit more flour, it'll be okay. Coming together nicely. I do have a stand mixer with the hook attachment, um, but this recipe is very simple. So you don't even need to use a stand mixer for it. Um, but it does require a little bit of arm strength, gosh. <laughs> Because it is so thick. This is the this is a good consistency. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of water. It should be good. So the dough can get a little bit more sticky. This is what we want. Mm -hmm. I I dropped dough on my counter, but this is how the dough will look like. Very sticky. I'm gonna add this back to the bowl. Oh, and please make sure you sanitize your workspace um, before you start, because you're going to have to, you're not kneading, but just in case. Um, this is the dough. Um, it sticks to the to the wooden spoon like glue. So this is the dough. This is what we have as of right now. And so, and that's basically it. And the rest is literally just a waiting game. And so now we're gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to probably grab another tea towel or paper towel or serene wrap and just cover it and let it rise for like maybe an hour. And then I'm going to bring forward the one I prepared earlier. And I'm going to put this one to the back. And I'm going to cover it. I'm going to put this one to the front. Actually, I'm going to move this to the other counter. Um, any other questions? Do we have any questions? Or was that pretty self-explanatory? Will you be able to share the recipe? Yeah, um, I can share a doc with you. Okay, yeah, I can put it in the chat. Okay. Um, I probably won't be able to share it now because I'm on my phone and my computer okay. won't let me log in for some reason. Um, but I can give you the measurements if that if you want to add it to the chat. Okay, yeah. All right, so it was three and a quarter cup flour, all-purpose flour, or bread flour. Mm -hmm. And um, two teaspoons salt, one teaspoon sugar, and um, one packet of the quick dry yeast, of the rapid rise yeast, this one, one packet of that one, a whole packet. And I added approximately one cup, quarter, plus a quarter, plus about four tablespoon of warm water to it. How much does that add up to? Like one and a third cup? No, I added um, one and one third cup of water, warm water, plus four tablespoons, not a quarter. Now for the other part of this workshop, um, with the bread, of course, we're going to make like a quick strawberry jam. And it's so simple and it's so tasty. I bought um, strawberries from my local supermarket. So we're gonna go ahead and make a strawberry jam, but first I'm gonna all drop them all in here and I'm going to wash them. I'm probably not going to use both packets, but you can. And for the strawberry jam or preserve, all you need is strawberries and lemon and lemon juice. You could grate a little bit of the lemon zest on top, but 
I just like, I like grading it because it gives a little extra kick. But, um, yeah, take a couple more from this packet. I'm just gonna wash these real quick. Strawberries, and then I have the I have a small saucepan. I'm gonna put them now for this recipe. You can use a little bit of cornstarch to thicken up the consistency of the jam to your liking, um, but it's not really necessary. Um, I'm trying to dirty as little dishes as possible, so I don't have to do a lot of cleanup. So I'll be cutting the strawberries from here. You could dice them into whatever size um, you want, but I like to do them into smaller size. Um, just makes it easier for me. So I'm just gonna cut them and put them straight into the um, pot. And yeah, what are the ingredients for the um, strawberry jam? Um, just strawberries. Um, maybe like two cups strawberries, um, one cup sugar. Um, actually not two cups, a whole box of strawberries and like one cup sugar. Um, about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Um, and if you want to thicken it up with the cornstarch slurry, you could do one tablespoon of cornstarch with um, about a tablespoon of water and add it to it once the um, strawberry starts cooking. And should the water be room temperature or warm or? So the stra we're not adding water to this. Oh, for the, the strawberries? Oh, to the, um, to the slurry, um, room temperature water is fine. Okay. But you know, we could add water to it if we wanted it to cook a little faster, but then it just makes it harder to thicken up. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? No? I always tell my mom not to cut like this in the kitchen and now I'm doing it. So it's a very hypocritical moment for me right now. That's a very pretty knife. Where'd you get that from? Oh, I got this ever since I was in Florida um, from this brand, Time and Table. So I bought all of my knives from them because they're really sharp and it's very heavy. Do they and all so feel... look like the <laughs> rainbow? Do they all look like have that colorful? Well, the ones I bought. So it came in a set of three. And so um, this one is actually one I bought for my mom. Um, I hide mine so she doesn't use them. <laughs> so they remain sharp. Um, 
but yeah they all have like this pretty like reflective rainbow situation on them yeah i was obsessed with time ta time and table because they have such like a really good um range of products they have really good cookwares too Um, so you can do this with whatever fruits is in season. I'm not sure if strawberries are in season right now, but a good fruit that you could use is probably cherries because cherries just came into season. And you can do peaches. I did peach jam and nectarine, and it's really um, it's really tasty. But those do take a little bit longer to cook. Um, so. Alec, has it been 30 minutes since we started? I didn't put a timer. It is 5.28. Okay, so I got a little bit more time. So I'm asking because my Dutch um, pot is in the oven and I wanted to let it um, heat up for like 30 minutes until it's like really hot in there. And then I was gonna transfer the dough to it. So I wanna get these strawberries cut up before. You said 5.28? Yeah. Okay. Can I cut all these strawberries in the next two minutes? We'll see. Um, what are some, I guess I should ask the question. Um, what are some of your favorite jams or like fruit preserves to make? Anyone, anyone can answer. I like uh, raspberry or blackberry jam. Mm, yeah. It's a really nice cake filling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody put something in the chat. I can't really see it, but I see Rose. Oh, yeah. Kiana Hayes said, I haven't made this, but I tried Rose Jam. Rose Jam. It's how do you do that? Is it like with the rose petals? Ah, OK, that's interesting. I, I was learning the other day about um, dehydrated roses and how to incorporate them in my desserts. And literally it is so simple. All you have to do is pluck the rolls, clean them and um, place them on a paper towel and put another paper towel on top. So you create like the roses that layer in between and you use a heavy plate, any heavy plate you have in your kitchen and pop it in the microwave at 30 second intervals and then you have dried roses. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. And that's like for decoration? Edible, apparently. Oh, edible. Yeah. But I would mainly use it for decoration. I don't, I don't want to eat roses. <laughs> but you could, one way that you could add flavor to your um, desserts or anything you're doing is rose water. There is some um, culinary grade rose water. So I like to add that as like an extract of some sort. And yeah. it's a really good, um, it's a really good flavor. When I was working in an Indian restaurant, we used a lot of rose water. Yeah. I think the particular brand that my sisters and I used to buy was an Indian brand. So I think that says a lot. <laughs> OK, it's 5.31 now. OK. Almost done with the no strawberry. Rush. No rush. No rush. Safety first. All right, I should have been using a cutting board for this. <laughs> but it was so far away and I was like, eh, I'll just do this the old fashioned way. That's how immigrants do it. Yeah. I got, I had so many cuts on my hands from when I first started how to cut properly or how to chop properly. And so I became scared of the knife, which then gave me more cuts. Oh. Like, because I was always afraid it was going to cut me. And whenever it does, I'm like, see, I was right. It cut me, so I'm not cutting. And then now it kind of like 
become second nature. But I do teach culinary classes. So I always like emphasize to like my students, I'm like, use your cutting board. Your hands is not a cutting board. And then so now for me to do this, like, wow. So much for practicing what I preach. What's your favorite jam to make? I have two. And that's because I incorporate them a lot in my desserts. The, one of them is this strawberry one. It is really good with like um, cream cheese like and whipped cream. Like if you're making like a berry chantilly cake or like one of those berry cakes, it's a really good um, filling and it gives um, extra added sweetness. Um, and then my second favorite will be, um, oh, I have a lot. It's not only two, but my if I had to pick, it'll be raspberries because I love anything berries. And... But it is making raspberry jam, it is such a it's such a pain. Because I mean, for me, when I'm making desserts, I have to strain it because of the little seeds. And it takes forever unless I'm using like a cheesecloth to like squeeze it out without it um without it, without any of the seeds like getting through. So let me turn on my stove. before I do that. So to this, all I'm going to add is hmm, maybe like a cup of sugar. I might add a little bit more because we, we do have a lot of berries in there. Just pour it. It does seem like a lot, right? It's necessary because the sugar is going to cause all that water from the berries to like out. I'm gonna add a little bit more for good luck. <laughs> um, and I add all that in there. So that's how much I'm adding to it. And I am also going to like this particular knife. I am not afraid of it because I think my mom has dulled it out to like, to the point where I don't even think it functions as a knife. I'm not really afraid of it. I'm just gonna squeeze out some lemon juice in there. I'm, I'm catching the seeds in my hands. The lemon is going to intensify the flavor. I'm gonna add one more lemon because I really like the citrusy. But it adds so one more. And it helped extend the shelf life of it, so as well too. So that's always an added plus. I got a seed in there. This a good stir. I don't know. I, you see how it's like reducing already, and it's not even on the heat. So. I'm just gonna pop this in the stove. I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit. Give me a minute. I'm just transitioning my camera real quick so we can get closer to the stove. Perfect. So I'm just gonna let this cook. So this is all this is, this is all that is to this one. So we got our dough rising for the second, um, for the second bread. And now we are going to move on to the first dough that I had made. Um, just make some base for this here, because we have a really hot pan coming in. Give me one minute. Um, 
me transition here. Um, where's my camera not turn on? This is the first dough. I don't know if you guys notice how it's like fluffier. And this is the the set the um the dough we just made together. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this one. It looks like it's drying out. I guess I didn't cover it properly. Um, here. This one, let's put it in the back. So this is the first though. My mom, you guys, you see how stretchy it is, and it like literally unsticks itself from the bowl. This is what we want from it. Um. So now, I have my gloves on. I'm gonna go in the oven, and I am going to remove that pan or that pot. Ooh, this is hot. This is the pan situation. It's really hot. I need to not let it touch my skin. I don't know if you noticed how the parchment paper is like brownish. Now, to the dough, all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of flour to it. Like this much flour, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on top. What does that do? It's gonna give us some of that crispy um there. So we're not kneading. We're not kneading it. We're just gonna fold it into itself. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of the um the flour to my hands. It's a little bit so it doesn't stick to my fingers. We're just folding it to itself. pockets like you're folding an envelope right I don't know if you guys noticed this though it's very stretchy folds. This is the dough. It doesn't sing. Sorry guys, I think Benya accidentally disconnected. 
I'm gonna try to get her back. All right, so in the meantime, I already went and added the dough to the um, bowl. I mean, to the um, to the Dutch um, pot. Sorry, I got kicked out, I don't know why. So I just went with my knife and created some scores on it just to create like some design, nothing major. Creating some patterns. So now this is pretty much done. Um, we just got to put it in the oven to bake for about 30 minutes with the lid on. And then for the last um, 15 or so minutes, we let it cook with the lid off. Um, that's about it. So I'm going to put this in the oven. It's really hot. Now let me switch over to the to the strawberries. So we're here with the strawberries. It's my ring light. Just gonna move it just a little bit. How high is the flame when you're doing that? Um, it's literally on three, between three and four. Okay, so like a Medium, 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 low, yeah. Do you guys notice all that water and juice mm -hmm. from the strawberries? Now, so if you were to stop here, you would be okay. And that would be considered like a compote or something because the fruit is not all the way cooked down. But we want this to be like super cooked down. Super, super cooked down. Because, um, if I were to pick one of the strawberries right now, it will still have a little bit of crunch to it. It was hard to cut. So you'll know it's ready when you mash your strawberries against the side and it's just like crushed. This one is a little bit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn up the flame a little bit. And now it's between a five and a six. That's where we are. So we're just gonna let it cook. Um, and there will be some foam happening on the side. Um, we can remove it once that's happened. But that's about it for now. I'm going to um, turn the camera around and we can talk a little bit while we wait. Okay, one minute.
to start. Okay, I'm here. Um, oh, it started bubbling. So I'm just gonna remove some of the, I have this little container and I'm just going to like scrape the top so I can take off the foam. Um, let me turn my camera on so you can see what I'm doing. Do you guys notice the little foam happening? So we're just gonna. What happens if you don't remove the foam? I mean, I sometimes I'm too lazy. I don't remove it, and it's still all right. Um, it's not really much of a difference. I think it causes it to burn faster. Mm. Um, I'm not too sure on that, so don't quote me on it. But yeah, that makes sense. And sometimes it will bubble over depending on the amount of stuff you have in there. So this has literally no water in it. This is literally just the berries, lemon juice, and sugar. That's all that's in there. Now, um, the reason why I did this recipe with the toast is just so um, just so we can have something we can put on top of the of the bread once it was done. So that's about it. Yeah. So for the rest of the um, remainder of the workshop, it's mainly a waiting game, waiting for everything to cook down. Um, do you guys have any questions, any comments? or anything of that nature. When did you first start baking? Um, <laughs> I started baking, uh, when I started high school, when I was like maybe like 13, um, I used to always help my parents in the kitchen or my mom and my sisters in the kitchen. And they were more of the cooking side of the family. And for me, cooking was always a bit more, it's, it sounds weird because bacon is very tedious, but cooking was always like, it was always such a drag. So I never really like liked it. But baking, I think all the steps to baking and the science and how specific it is, it made me more, it was more challenging for me. So I think I started doing it. I remember like the first time I baked, it was like literally rocked hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I think, um, and I didn't even have the proper ingredients at the um, um, equipment at the time. Wait, let me show you guys this. It says, you see all that? boiling over so we'd want to remove these like right here how long will it's, it take family there's not a lot of bakers oh there's a lot of like culinary but not a lot of pastry people how long does the uh, does it take for the jam to cook down long actually once I turned on the heat it was literally game over for it and if you see the strawberries are like softening up themselves once the strawberries start like breaking down the jam will get a little thicker but these are all the foam you want to remove. Oh, and I'm actually self-taught because no one in my family taught me how to bake. I didn't go to school for it, but I had to learn online and also through like messing up <laughs> all the time. Um, and I like to combine like um, baking skills that I've learned like in my adult years, like while being in the U.S. to like 
the flavors of my home country. So I think I do, I do things a little different. I mean, at least I think I do things a little different, but, um, oh, I also, there's one thing that I like adding to this and it is vanilla extract. And it's like a mixture of vanilla and almond extract to this. I just remember since I said my home country. So I got these two, um, flavorings they're imitations but i like to use the real vanilla but then i only have these ones and i kind of like the smell from them and my mom and my aunts used to use it all the time when they're making like desserts and stuff like and it's really good so i like to add about you guys see how it's bubbling over now if i let it sit i'm probably gonna have like a strawberry volcano oh my god Do you add the vanilla and the almond at the end? Yeah. Because if I add it now, it will just cook down. But yeah. like towards the last maybe two minutes of this. Um, so the berries are not fully cooked down yet. So we can stop here. Honestly, if you like a little chunk in your berry, I mean in your jam, but I want it to soften up a little bit more. I want it to soften up a little bit more. I was just checking the time. But you guys see how it's bubbling over? If I let it stay just like that without stirring it, it will literally boil over. And you don't want to not, not stir this because it will burn at the bottom. So you always want to constantly move it around. Very tedious, but get a really good flavor. And a good trick to thicken it up if you don't want to use the cornstarch, you can um, once you take it out of the um, of the stove, you mash the strawberries, you could like blend them, and you can add them to the freezer to let it cook down. But all this foam is coming off. Pushing the foam to just one side. I like to go in and taste the foam that I pick out. It's very good. It's very citrusy. So this is really good on bread, on cakes. Like if you're making like a filling for your cakes, um, anything like you wake up in the morning on a bagel. I used to put like a little bit of cream cheese on a bagel and with a little spoon full of jam on top. It's really good. Mm, yeah, that does sound good. I, I'll think, I think I'll bring this to the office, Alex, because honestly, I'm not going to use it. Yeah. And the bread, too, because. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. I'm not going to eat all of this bread at home by myself. We can break bread. Huh? We can break bread. Break bread, yeah. And this is really good with chocolate. Um, chocolate. I find that fruits and chocolate really complement each other, especially when baking. Some people don't like them. But it really it's a really nice compliment. Like if you're making like the chocolate mousse, um, it's a really good combination. Anybody else have like any baking tips or tricks or things that they do?
Can you guys see clearly? Because I don't know if the steam is fogging up my camera. Yeah, we can see. Oh, Alex, a good idea is a pizza workshop, a pizza making. Oh, yeah. It is so easy. These are things I used to always be afraid of, like making pizza, like scones, like any of the breadier type of stuff. I used to always be afraid to make them because I'm like, oh my goodness, it is so hard. I need, I need all of this, I need all of that. And it really isn't. Like for pizza, I think it's just flour, oil, water, and there's something else. I think it's yeast as well. There's a baking powder, but it's really simple. Oh, so with this dough, when you make it, you can, um, minimum time required for it to like let it rise is 12 hours. You can store it in your fridge for up to like seven days. So like if you want to have the dough ready and then you're having a dinner party and then, and you need bread on the spot, like you could take it out of your fridge, let it come to room temperature, give it a nice folding and just pop it in your, your oven. And it's so simple. Uh, like this workshop might might run a little bit over. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Because I, I really want you guys to see the bread at the end. I think I put it five forty. So much longer for the bread. Um, maybe an additional. What time is it? It's almost so, six. Four. Maybe like another 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Because the last 10 minutes of the bread, I have to remove um, the lid. So by like 520-ish, I mean 620-ish, it should be good. But you guys notice how darker it is getting in color? Yeah, it's getting thicker. I just, yeah, I just splashed myself in the eyes of hot strawberries. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, we had somebody join us recently. Um, do you want to kind of go over the steps again? Oh, that's my sister. Or... <laughs> Giovanna. Yeah, that's my sister. <laughs> um. So we're making bread, the bread's in the oven. Let me show you. So we made a second dough. So now this dough is rising. Remember the dough earlier? You see how much it's rising now? Um, so you weren't there for it. You were a little bit late. And so now we're making a strawberry um, preserve or jam situation. So all it is is literally strawberry, maybe a cup and a half of white granular sugar. I use two lemon for extra, for a little extra thing. And um, although to this, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. It's always great when you're making dessert to add salt. You'll think that it, it does the opposite of making it salty. It just really, um, it really tightens those flavors. So Alex, to answer your question earlier, if I had left the um, phone there, although sometimes I do do it, it would have caused it to like um, boil over because this, this pan is, or pot is a little bit too small for the amount of strawberries I had cut in there. Oh, okay. Thanks. Jonah, do you have any questions? Who, me? Yeah, do you have any questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is your sister there with you? 
No, she's in Florida. <laughs> oh, Florida. So give me one minute. I'm just going to get another little bowl to make the slurry. And the slurry is literally just going to be flour, I mean, not flour, cornstarch and water. It's about a tablespoon of water. So with baking, I learned that it's very important to be as accurate as possible. You don't want to leave any room for, um, for mistakes. So I have about a tablespoon of the cornstarch to the water. I'm gonna stir that in until it's thick. So you want to melt the cornstarch or like blend the cornstarch into the water. Like it's not sticking at the end, at the bottom of the little container. Awesome. Let's get over to the pot. So this is our pot. I'm going to add the cornstarch to it. And automatically, you see how it started? Like it literally stopped the cooking process a little bit how it's sticking it up. So I want to stir that in there. Notice the difference? That's going to start bubbling. Now will be a great time to lower the heat so you don't get burnt with strawberry preserve. Now it looks very rich and thick. So we're gonna let it cook some more until like it coats the spoon. Like right now it's still a little bit translucent or transparent. So we wanna let it cook or thicken up a little bit more until it can hold itself on the spoon. But you still wanna remain stirring because at this moment it's very critical, especially after the cornstarch just reduced the amount of water or liquid that the strawberries release, you want to keep stirring it. Just want to make sure that my camera's not. Ouch! It will bubble and it will burn. <laughs> I remember when I was younger, I used to always, um, I used to always be jealous of my mom when she was cooking. Not jealous, because she just used to be so fearless going in there. And then for myself, I used to always come in with a pan or like a lid to shield myself from the hot stuff, or the hot oil or hot water. And she just used to be standing there just like coming her life away. So I used to always be like, I want to do that too. So at this moment, all the foam is gone. Most majority of the foam is in here. 
we're not gonna add this back to it. This is just, if that's a little dip or something, but that's it really serves as any purpose. I find that making the jam at home by yourself, it tastes so much better and fresher than buying it at the supermarket. Um, and you can always make, you can always make this in advance. And I think it can last in your fridge for up to like, I want to say 30 days, but I wouldn't push it because there's no citric acid in there, but we did use a little bit of lemon. I guess you could use it up for a while. But after like you put it in a jar, you would want to store it in your fridge unless you seal the jar properly with the cannon methods. But if you just put it in a jar, you have to store it in your fridge so it doesn't get back because there's no preservatives in there. All that water from earlier just reduced significantly. almost there. Oh, and with the bread, you could use any type of flour. You could use gluten-free flour, you could use all-purpose bread flour, whole wheat, like you could use any types of flour. Like the whole wheat flour is really good when you make this bread. Now, because we were in a time crunch, so we did the fast method of this bread, but if you do have time to make it and to let the dough sit and rise and even store it in your fridge, um, you can do that. You'll probably get an even tastier bread and an even fluffier bread because we didn't let the gluten develop as long as we would like. But this is the jam. Keep stirring it because there's still some chunky berry pieces in there. When I want to brush it, sometimes I'll go in with a potato masher that you use to make potato, um, what is it, mashed potatoes. And I'll just go in and start like pressing down on it. But I can't find my potato masher. So I'll do it like this. Oh, and you, you can use the same methods to do apples as well. Apples, grapefruits, like oranges, all of that.
me one minute. Let me just remove the lid from the. I just want to show you guys something real quick. This is the bread. It looks so good. Oh, wow. Uh, this, oh. this is hot. Let me put it back in there. Oh, boy. So for the last um, few minutes of it, we're going to let the bread cook without the lid. So I went and I, oh, this room, and I removed it. So it is very, very hot. So let's go back to the jam. This is... You're welcome, Mr. Song. Are you leaving? This is Han. It's really nice. Johanna, is Winnie gonna join? Say again. Winnie? Oh, I don't know if she's going to join. I don't know. So now if I were to pick up the berries, you guys notice? There's still some left to the, that sticks to the. Um. So you could stop it here. I like to let mine cook for a little bit longer. So in the next maybe five to eight minutes, the bread should be done. So I can show you guys the final, final look. This is how thick it is. So this is not its final stage. This is not the jam's final stage. So after um, you take it off the stove, you let it cool down. So right now I'm going to add a little bit of the vanilla extract to it. Personal taste. It smells so good. And um, I'm going to add a little bit of the. I'm going to add a little bit of the um, almond extract. I'm going to add a good amount. This almond and strawberry together is really good. Uh, this smells like so amazing. I'm just gonna grab a bowl and so 
but you don't want to just grab any bowl. You want to grab a glass heat sink bowl. This is the dough we worked on together. Notice how it almost tripled in size. Um, so it's just been sitting there. So this is the glass bowl I got for my jam. I wanna take it off the stove. Let me add in my, um, my phone to the holder. So that way. Sorry. I can have both hands. I want to take it off the stove, although I should probably let it cool down a little bit, but I just want to put it in here. Mm, smells good. I just did this because I want to put it in the freezer. <laughs> Ms. Hassan asked, what is the best way to cut the bread? This is really good. This is how thick it is. I just used the fork to show you, but like this is how thick it is. Genia, can you hear me? I'm gonna put this in the freezer. Put it, thicken up a little bit. So I'm going to get ready for my bread. Put on the oven. I'm going to put some parchment paper on my counter. Benny, can you hear me? Take a look at the bread. Somebody's trying to ask a question. Three more minutes for the bread, and I can show you guys. <laughs> Thank you all for staying that. behind. I know um, it's, we said it was behind. Benya. Huh. Oh. Maybe her volume is turned down. Oh, what the heck just happened? Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Alec, if you're speaking, I can't really hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can. Oh, okay. Mrs. Hassan was asking, what is the best way to cut the bread? Um, so it is good to have a bread knife. I don't have a bread knife, so I'm just gonna use this one I've been using. A bread knife, and you could just cut it into slices. I will show me, I'll show you in a minute. Let's see, 621. Okay. Just letting it get a little bit more color. Ooh. 
this is our bread. Oh, wow. It's so cute. So, give me a minute. I'm going to struggle real quick. This is it. This is what we want. So since we don't have enough time, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. But you wanna hear the crunch. You hear that? Ooh, that's hot. It's really hot. Using a bread knife would have been better, but um, let me struggle with this knife for a second. I think it's like the um, the bread is hot, fresh out of the oven, and I'm trying to cut it at the same time. It's not good. A serrated knife would have been better, but I can't find mine at the moment. So you would want to cut it into like. This is how fluffy it looks on the inside. Really good. And it tastes so good. It tastes like one of those breads you get fresh from the bakery. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the jam. I'm gonna put a little bit on top. A nice little snap. So far. Freezer. I have some strawberries that I had cut up on the side. Just gonna add them to it. This is it. And this is the bread. Um, so it's really good, really tasty, and really fresh. So. Anybody has any questions so far? the remainder of the workshop. Um, Alec, I am now done. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, it looks great. Thank you so much, Benya, for sharing the recipe. And thank you, everybody, for joining this evening. Um, have a great weekend. We have our farmer's market tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m at the uh, on 620 Skank Ave. Um, yeah, lots of fresh produce, local and um, organic and very affordable. So hope to see you guys there. Yes. Have a good night. All right, thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you everybody, good night. Good night. Bye, Giovanna. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.